previously on the Ultimate Iron Man series. As if the Ultimate Iron Man game mode isn't hard enough, we faced plenty of adversity in attempting the Majorina 1 and Majorina 2 quests. Luckily, we managed to endure. These best in slot PVM items will offer unrivaled utility further on in the account. Level 83 Farming. We achieved the ability to plant spirit trees, further easing our access to the realm of Gilinor. We also achieved level 88 agility, unlocking the Hydra shortcut. Once we're 95 Slayer, we'll be grinding the Hydra, and this will come in great use. Lastly, towards the end of the last video, we got locked out of farming contracts with an abysmal white lily into cactus into orange tree seed kicker. In order to resume contracts, we have to somehow find an orange tree seed. It shouldn't be too hard, but it's quite a setback as we'll be locked out of farming contracts for a day at least. This will prolong our long-term goal of achieving the ornate rejuvenation pool by quite a bit. So without further ado, I bring to you UIM Loki Progress Series video number 17. Well, we managed to do a kill at Hespori without having any armor and also a limited inventory space because previously we were having to death bank to get an entire inventory of food, but I guess our combat stats are just getting up there. So can we get a bucket? I would absolutely love that. Dwarf weed seed, that's that's okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. Any sort of high level herb seeds are great for hard level contracts. No fucking way, dude. <laughs> Oh god, what is that? I think that's the fourth agility pet I've gotten in old school RuneScape, maybe the fifth. I got two on the Iron Man, one on here, and then one on my my main account, so... <laughs> Level 88 agility, and we're pulling a, a squirrel pet on the ultimate Iron Man. You know what? Since the Dark Mire just got released, I think I'm gonna go for the, uh, the Dark Acorn, because... The Hallowed Sepulcher is like really fun. So we'll get the Dark Graceful set and we'll get the uh, the Dark Acorn too. Oh my god, I fucking love this pet, man. That's so cool. That's a, you just love to see. That's just, it's when you least expect it and it's just such a great feeling. Can we imbue the luck from this squirrel pet into getting an orange tree seed to unlock contracts, please? No, Ah. Oh. oh, it's okay, you tried, buddy. Don't worry about it. Going for the orange tree seed, but we managed to get a maple seed. A Celestra seed and a U seed, so these bird nests are pretty good. I mean, like, I'll I'll take it. I kind of just want the orange tree seed. These are great, but I'll, I'll take it. Maple seed, okay. Another maple seed. Shout out to like episode four when we went like 15 bird runs dry of maple seeds. Boom, there it is. Orange tree seed, farming contracts unlocked. Oh, <laughs> never thought I'd be so happy to see an orange tree seed, but that is a beautiful, beautiful sight. Now we just gotta wait like 16 hours, assuming we don't get any chrono seed procs, to resume our farming contract grind. It's kind of painful knowing that I've dropped like, let's see, yeah, 43 orange tree seeds along the way, and we had to spend like six hours of birdhouse runs to get one. I guess that's just UAM, man. That's just how it goes. It could be a lot worse. I mean, I'm not complaining, honestly. There could be a lot worse. I think UAMs today have it way easier than they did in the in the early days, obviously. Well, that's pretty neat. That's like 1k Herblor XP. Okay, I don't think I've ever actually done this. I must have, but I think we just use it on this chest, right? Um, yeah, there it is. Cool. Yeah, that's a bit less than 1k Herblor XP, but I mean, we'll take it. Herblor XP is invaluable on a UAM. We actually forgot to ensure this pet. That could have been bad. Uh, luckily, we remembered eventually. Hey, 89 agility. That unlocks the highest shortcut in the game, the Revenant Cave, hard Revenant Cave shortcut. Pretty essential for like any Revenant Cave account, but it doesn't really matter to us, but I mean, we'll take the level. Decided to get the level in this special place representing the uh, Ultimate Iron Man game mode. Probably don't need to say anymore. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna go do some pest control now, take advantage of this opportunity to have empty inventory. And pest control is an activity that requires no inventory space. We completed the Western Province Hard Diary. We never got our Elite Void. So we're going to go get that as well as complete the rest of the... I think we need the Mage Helm and the Melee Helm. Looks like the Orange Tree Seed has about 12 hours left. Should be able to complete most of the Void stuff we want to do in that time, if not all of it. Going to get our Glory and Borrow's Gloves from here. And our Dragon Defender and Dragon Battle Axe from here. It's like definitely worth it to wait to unlock the void sets that you want to get. Um, wait until you get the hard lander unlocked, which requires 100 combat. Uh, I mean, it gives more points per completion, but also the people here are just like way more try hard. Like oftentimes 
there will be like four or five people clicking on the spawn in anticipation for it to spawn so they can try and get the points and the XP. You know, it's not an XP waste zone. <laughs> and just like right there, the portal had just spawned and it was knocked down immediately. The time it takes for the last portal to spawn is two minutes after the game starts. And generally speaking, the game will complete like right around two minutes and five seconds or even less if it's like the yellow portal, which just dies super quick. That means if you're getting five points every two minutes, you're getting 150 points an hour. And I think full void is like something like 850 points. So that's like five or six hours to get the full void. But if you were to do it on like the easy lander, it would take like significantly longer, mostly because it's a bunch of noobs, you know, they don't really care about getting their void set efficiently. They just probably want to play the game. Oh shit, this week's update is officially here. Let's see what we got. There it is. That is a beautiful sight. We got the gauntlet changes. For those of you who haven't been watching this series, we've been anticipating this update for, I don't know, seven, eight weeks. It's the best in slot moneymaker in terms of raw GP and hour, in terms of alcohols and such. And we are going to grind the hell out of this. This is the most important one right here, the crystal staff max hit. All tiers of the crystal staff have their max hit stats increased significantly. Our melee stats are pretty low, so we're going to kind of depend on that for being able to keep up DPS on the corrupted Hunliff. Filling vials is now a one-tick animation. That's fine, just a little quality of life. The bosses will only spawn in these gray areas, so you won't get gypped out on RNG trying to get your tier 3 weapons. As well, we'll be able to easily access tier 2 armor because it's now cheaper to make. And another quality of life update, you no longer have to really count the attacks that the Corrupted Hunlift does. It'll play an animation and a sound effect right before it changes its attack style. I mean, it's probably still worth it to count, but I mean, it's a little bit more lax. If you like lose track, you don't have to guess the prayer switch you, it'll just like notify you with the animation. Super, super nice. We've been ready for this for a long time. There it is. What a beautiful sight. Check health on the orange tree. Only took us about 36 hours to complete that contract. That just happens sometimes. You get jained. Check the health here. Ah, 85 farming. No longer have to boost for hard contracts. Extremely convenient. As well as we can now plant torstal and uh, celestris trees without boosting, obviously. We can go ahead and drop this garden pie as we'll never need it again. Oh god, we just got a white lily rolled down into a yew tree. Gonna have to skip that. Please don't get a fruit tree. Please don't get a fruit tree. Please don't get a fruit tree. Okay, thank you. A 800 accommodation points. Exactly what we need if we did our math right. Let's go get those pieces. All right, so we exchange on this guy. And we want to get a void melee helm. Boom. Beautiful. We also want to get the void magic helm beautiful now we need to get the elite void i think we do we use it on him no we talk to him uh how do we do this again oh right we gotta talk to this guy obviously yes i would like to thank you very much sir and my second piece here thank you very much Boom, that is full Elite Void unlocked. That is really nice, never have to come back here. This is some sick fashion scape, honestly. I mean, like, the Ultimate Iron Man is cool as well. I mean, like, what if we just like walked around like this? That'd be crazy, people would think we're like stupid. That reminds me of the Max Hood cape, actually. Kinda, kinda neat. Yeah, I, I honestly just love all this like white and black contrast going on here. And the best part is that we can store this in the POH. Not the best part, but I mean, that's like a really good feature for objects and items on Ultimate Iron Man. All right, let's finally try out this new Corrupted Gauntlet business. Ah, okay. Well, we just tried twice on the Corrupted and we failed both times, but we also didn't even get to the final boss. So I'm going to try to optimize the uh, gathering strategy, I suppose. And, ah, man, this is still kind of hard. Maybe I just have to get used to it a little bit. All right, full inventory of food, two prayer potions. Let's see if we can do it. That was close. I think we should be able to do it because we took a lot of damage on the final boss right there. I don't know why, but for some reason I'm like really nervous about doing this. It's probably hindering my uh, my my ability to win, if anything. Jesus, these are 90 XP each here because of the diary. And we just got, I mean, we got a hundred so far, so that's 9,000 experience from 
We're not even, it's like still going. I only plant the snake grass seeds here at the Falador patch, so just so we can maximize the XP. Has us go through them a bit slower, but I don't really mind because, I mean, why, why would you mind? Feels good to be back on the farming contract grind. Although if I'm honest, having to do this once an hour makes me a little nervous. All right, this time for real, we really got to see if we can beat this. God damn it, dude. The recording maybe lag, but I mean, we weren't gonna beat it anyway. Yeah. You know, I don't know if we can complete this, honestly. That was like, we didn't take any damage. We didn't take any unnecessary damage and just didn't have enough DPS, unfortunately, so. Damn, that really sucks. All right, once again, we got full tier two armor except the body. We got basic and two tier three weapons, the staff and the bow. Full HP, pretty much full prayer. 20 seconds left. If we don't get it here, probably not going to start grinding this until we get higher stats, unfortunately. tornadoes man i don't know how you're supposed to it seems like there's a 50 50 if you run right through them but you just dodge them like because you're you're when you're running your your character registers like on every other tile and god damn it dude that was felt like we clicked away from that i'm gonna look back at the clip yeah okay well i reviewed the clip and it was legit uh 10 deaths about six of those were from post update today so i don't know man this is not good i don't think it's gonna happen unfortunately just as a reminder for myself and those of you who don't know, I mean, the regular gauntlet is just so easy. I mean, we have four minutes, four and a half minutes left, and we're already prepared. I mean, that was extremely scuffed, and we still, I mean, we still got him. It's just too easy, but man, I wish we could do the corrupted. That'd be so nice. It's happening again. We got dragon fruit tree into papaya tree. Pretty much have to reroll that because we have a palm tree growing. Please don't get another fruit tree. I've never had a triple fruit tree. Nice tree, it's beautiful. <sighs> okay, full inventory of food again. I am being really stubborn about this. It's pretty obvious we're not going to be able to complete this consistently if we can't even do it once. At least we got him here. Oh, wait, what? Wait, did we get it? Oh man, I don't think we got it, but we killed him. Wow, okay, I don't think I've ever actually seen that happen before. That's pretty weird. Man, you know, that really sucks. I sort of was just expecting we'd be able to consistently beat the Corrupted Gauntlet with the nerfs, or the buffs rather, because we could already consistently get it to like 100, 200 HP every time. But I guess we just can't do it. I mean, we were sort of designing this account around the idea that we'd be grinding the Corrupted Gauntlet for GP so we could train construction. But I suppose we'll just have to brainstorm for a little bit. In the meantime, we'll just continue what we were up to, which is unlock Ornate Rejuvenation Pool. Just a nice little strength level while we're editing the last video. Sort of becoming a little bit hard pressed for activities we can do while our inventory is committed to farming contracts. One of the things is Barbarian Assault, since we just uh, suicided to Hespori, we do still need the Fighter Torso. And we'll just slowly fill up our inventory with the seeds we need for the contracts as we withdraw them his, from his quarry. But we need to finish this sooner rather than later. As our inventory fills up with seeds, we'll be less effective at inventory intensive roles like defender and healer. Hey, there it is. I believe with that completion of the queen, we should have enough points to unlock the infamous fighter torso, penance torso, or so it's called. Boom, unlocked. Beautiful, plus four strength bonus. That's a max hit. Essentially the budget bandos chest plate with lower defensive stats, obviously. Shout out to this guy, Orlord. He's like really good at Barbarian Assault. And he basically carried me all the way through this. I met him earlier in the account and he's made this process like really easy. Also, you can store the uh, fighter torso in the armor case, which is like really useful, obviously for a UAM because 
I don't have inventory space and I don't want to have to worry about that. So anything that's durable is super good. My character keeps getting like stalled after each queen we do. I've, no I've never like seen this before. I guess this is what they mean by spaghetti code and barbarian assault, but it's kind of, it's kind of neat, I guess. I bet there's like a bunch of hidden potential that no one's ever discovered, like some sort of barbarian assault exploit in the game, like item duplication or something, I don't know. So I'm not just the fighter torso, but these guys got me pretty close to getting the elite candor and diary dime, which is level five in all roles. So shout out to these guys, especially Orlord. Nice, new PB at Hispori. Can we get a bucket? That's pretty good. I'll take that. I mean, we like chrono seeds and Aventus seeds. That's, those are like the best herbler XP you can get. You know, something like 1.6k herbal XP each, not bad. I'm gonna go ahead and plant this chrono seed instead of the ISR seed, just allows us to expedite the farming contract process a little bit. I'm really happy we got the level for these crystal imps. Some, something about them is just really fun and nice. Imagine post 99 thieving a pyramid plunder. So one of the things that we've been working on passively while we do farming contracts and do stuff like agility is attempt to unlock the Pharaoh Scepter so we can build the occult altar in the POH. This honestly isn't too bad. It's like, you know, one click, two click, three click, and then four or five clicks for one for a one in one thousand chance on the scepter. So we're just we're just doing the ch the method where you loot the chest in the first room. That's it ends up being around hundred chests per hour, which is like one tenth of the rate of the scepter, which means if we do this for 10 hours, we should expect to get one scepter. It's only 7,000 experience an hour, which is basically nothing. So if we were to go dry here, you know, say we go five times a drop rate, we spend 50 hours here, that would really be inconvenient. So hopefully we don't spend too much time here. Shout out to uh, OSRS Curious for being a cool dude and answering my newbie YouTuber questions. I'm like pretty grateful that this little trick exists, allows you to like harvest and place your watermelons in the compost bin in the same tick. If this wasn't here, this would be like way more tedious, but thankfully it's here. So it's like a godsend for UAMs. These things are like the most satisfying things in farming. Boom, 15k XP each. That's 45k XP total. And level 86 farming coming in here. Beautiful, beautiful level. Nice little Hespori kill. Can we get a bucket? Not really too much to show the past few days. Just been taking it easy, chilling. Agility and Hespori. Here's another Hespori. Can we get a bucket? Celestris Tree Seed. That is quite beautiful. I cannot complain about that one. Nice little Tears of Guthix run. This should get us a Slayer level. Or... <laughs> 4 XP off. Okay, okay. Well played, Jagex. Well, we done did it again. We just rolled a Torstal Seed into a U Seed into a Curry Tree Seed. Uh, we don't have Torstal, U doesn't make sense to get, and now we just basically locked ourselves out of contracts for another 24 hours, so big rip. We also just pre-planted a palm tree seed, so even if we get the curry tree seed, we still gotta wait a while. Oh god, that's that's a good sight. We managed to get it on our third birdhouse run. Pretty happy about that. Could have been dry for days, honestly. We could have gotten really unlucky, but thankfully we can resume contracts pretty soon. This is nice. I would love to get a goddamn bucket. It would essentially double the amount of compost we have and effectively have the amount of time we spend making it. Can we get a bucket? That is terrible. And there is 87 farming. That is not terrible. That is great. We can now plus three boost to plant this redwood seed, which we've been hanging on to. That'll make hard contracts just slightly more easier to manage as that will be permanently planted and we, and we can always roll on the redwood table for hard contracts. So very nice unlock. We're also one level away from being able to plus three boost for our second spirit tree, which I'm planning to put in Hasidius because it sort of makes getting to the Hasidius farming patch a bit more convenient. Boom, boost, and plant. Beautiful. We're not gonna be protecting this because we don't really have any dragon fruit trees to, to protect it with. But that's okay, ultra compost plus like daily monitoring should be fine. Its growth cycle is like once every 10 hours or so. So it takes tw it would take 20 hours for it to die, assuming we don't catch the disease stage. Ah, oh, feels good, man. <laughs> Curry tree seed is ready to go, which means we can finally resume farming contracts after 36 hours. Oh, all right, back on the grind, feels good, man. Oh God, white lily, gotta reroll that, unfortunately. Oh God, curry tree seed. Okay, is this hap- please don't happen again. Please don't- 
please don't be another fruit tree seed. Please don't be another fruit tree seed. Please, please, man. Whew. Can we get a bucket? KC number 18. I'm not expecting the bucket because we're only half the kill count of the drop rate, but can we get it anyway? No. Five Catentide seed though. That's actually really good. That's a lot of Herbler XP. Also, um, we're going to keep the ISR planted here over the Atas seed because the Atas seed, it does increase yield, but overall the ISR seed increases yield more because it reduces the disease chance from like 6.8 to like 2.3, which is roughly an increase in yield of like, it ends up working out to like 0.1 more yield per patch over the Atas seed, assuming you're not using the revive. Oh my God, we got the scepter. Yes, dude. Yes. Yes, dude. Yes, man. Yes. Oh, that feels so good. I thought we were going to go dry on it. We only, we went like two hours extra dry, but like, that's not too bad. I mean, we could have gone way more dry, so I'm just happy to get it. Uh, that's a beautiful sight. Oh man, that feels great. If you were going for like the maximum efficiency account, you would use the first scepter you get to get a second scepter. The first one would be the occult altar scepter. And the second one would be the master clue stash scepter. And it's significantly faster to grind scepters if you already have a scepter, because the scepter teleports you right to the place that you get your second scepter. So that's a lot of scepter talk, but unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be going for the max efficiency thing, just because I don't really feel like spending another 10 hours to get a second scepter. So we're just going to put this scepter onto the occult altar for now, or the ancient altar rather, the POH. There's one magic stone, 975k, that's okay with me. One ancient signet, thank you Elvis appreciate it and now we just need to clear up 10 spaces for limestone bricks hopefully no one comes and steals our stuff on this table oh here it is ancient altar unlocked massive massive unlock on the account we can now access the ancient spellbook whenever, wherever, easily, like five seconds, no matter what, making Burst Slayer and Barrage Slayer significantly more viable. We don't have to run to that temple in the middle of nowhere. Boom, huge. And luckily no one stole our stuff. So here we are back at Relica, just grinding out the last couple hundred thousand XP at this agility course. We'll be moving on to Ardoin pretty soon, which is nice, it's pretty great. At the beginning of the video, we set out to get 82 Herb Lore, which is what you need to plus five boost to make anti-venoms, which is the main ingredient for the ornate rejuvenation pool. Once we get the ornate rejuvenation pool, we'll pretty much be set to go ahead and train Slayer efficiently. We built the ancient altar in the house, which means we can quickly swap over to the ancient spellbook for burst and barrage tasks, which is really, really good, really good XP. I'm gonna be making divine magic potions to boost us up so we can smoke barrage. It gives like plus six max hits over ice burst, and it also uses blood runes, which means we don't need to buy chaos runes because we have, you know, over 400,000 blood runes. So definitely want to use those as opposed to buying chaos runes. I was hoping we'd be able to get the ornate rejuvenation pool by the end of the video, but I just sort of overestimated the potential of the hard contracts. If we look at all the herbal XP worth of seeds in the inventory, as well as all the herbal XP in the looting bag here, it comes out to around just about 500k XP in terms of seeds and herbs, according to my calculations, which have been historically wrong. So I'm just going to assume they're wrong, but they're probably pretty close. That means in this video, we got two thirds of the way to our goal, which means in the next video, we'll definitely be able to knock that out. And once we do that, I'm going to start the Slayer grind. We're going to get like, I don't know, 87 Slayer next video or something crazy. Definitely stay tuned for that if you're interested. And with all that said, if you guys made it to the end of the video and you're not subscribed, you're literally insane. So as always, thanks for watching guys. Take care. I, I love you. Stay safe out there. Peace out. Goodbye.